So usually I think about what I want to make. I get the seed of an idea and I let it sit for sometimes up to two years. I usually have a few projects in mind that I've been thinking about for a long time before I start them. Once I actually start production, I start with a lot of sketches. I think about the concept, I write down notes, I work things out and try to get my ideas to become something physical, something with, with form, something solid with shape. So I always start with pencil. I'll start penciling and make a really, really rough sketchy marks on the wood and just try to accumulate some marks so that it's less intimidating uh, than looking at a, a blank canvas at a blank piece of wood. I usually work out the, the composition and the main spatial relationships in thumbnail sketches and then I translate them onto the wood block. When I draw I use a mirror because when you do woodcut you have to do it in reverse because when you print it they come out backwards. Once the pencils are what I would consider finished, when they're pretty tight and detailed, I switch over to markers and I start making it look more like what it's going to look like in the final woodcut. The process is very similar to comic books in that in comic books there's a penciler, then there's an inker, and they each have a different role. And I try to keep those roles in mind as I'm making the piece. So the penciling is kind of like making a map, and the inking is more like making instructions. The instructions are for the carving, which is the next stage. Before graduating from college, one of my professors gave us a great piece of advice. She quoted David Bowie. She told the class to always turn and face the strange. She says it's essential for artists to go where it's unfamiliar, to look where it's uncomfortable, to find places that are difficult to be in, that challenge our assumptions, and, and this is where inspiration lives, and this is also where personal and artistic growth happens. I always try to keep that in mind and try to live up to that advice. As an artist, your life shouldn't be going through the paces blindly. As an artist, it's good to always have to be pushing back against something. Once the carving is finished, it's time to print. First, I'll put the ink on the wood block, and then put paper on top of that. Next, I run it through the press. Then I'll peel back half the paper and check to make sure that all the areas are smooth, velvety black. It's it's important for the composition, it's important for the overall look of the piece to make sure that everything is smooth, everything is, is solid. Then I'll take a wooden spoon and burnish the back of the paper. This part of the process is not my favorite. It's uh, labor intensive, but it is the final step. I can carefully remove the paper from the wood block, hang it up on the wall, and have a look at the finished piece. People think that it's scary or a big risk to be a full-time artist. And they're right, it can be. But most artists and most people who are successful will tell you that they've failed way more times than they succeeded. It sounds cliche, but you have to fail before you can succeed. Failure is part of it. It makes you better. It can motivate you. If you can 
put yourself in a position where you can take the risk, make the sacrifices, uh, I think that you can take that leap and who knows what might happen. Thank you.